What does FNAF Help Wanted hide off camera in the Afraid of the Dark minigames? In Help Wanted, you're thrown to an array of FNAF-based locations to take on a variety of odd jobs. From working as a night guard to repairing disheveled animatronics, each of these positions come with a few occupational hazards. The Curse of Dreadbear DLC is no different, only this time around, we're more of a participant than an employee. Today we'll be taking a look out of bounds in search of things we're not supposed to see, like how Foxy's pirate ride functions off camera. We'll also be breaking the corn maze in as many ways as possible. So I hope you enjoy today's look behind the scenes of Help Wanted. Now, as we head into the Curse of Dreadbearer's main hub, we're met with a title screen where the DLC's logo is projected on the side of a house. We're sitting next to a campfire in the woods, and we can see Bonnie and Chica in the distance. It's hard to see much of anything here because of how dark it is, but with the lights on, we can see this area a lot easier. First and foremost, there is a massive Dreadbear leaning over the house in front of us, and moving the camera beyond this structure reveals not only is it one-sided, but you'll see that Dreadbear is missing his legs. We never see the lower half of his body on screen, so you would never know that he's missing parts. On the other side of the map, we'll find two more animatronics just kind of hanging out over here. Withered Bonnie is standing out in the open, uh, watching TV. I'm not sure if that's what they intended, but that's what it looks like to me. Withered Cheeky, on the other hand, is standing in the tree line, staring in the direction of the player, which is super creepy. Both of these animatronics have idle animations, but they're not a threat to us in any way. Even if I teleport the player over to withered Bonnie, they are completely harmless. With the lighting effects disabled, we can see that the tree stumps surrounding us have a basic grid texture applied to them. It's a bit interesting because you can see this during regular gameplay as well, simply by turning your game's brightness all the way up. Another potential oversight is this TV I found hidden beneath the map itself. Just beside the house in front of us, we'll find a copy of the same TVs that are scattered all around us, only it's not visible to the player at all. That's it for this title screen, so let's see what we can find in the main hub itself. This area is definitely on the spookier side, as it's lined with jack-o'-lanterns, twisted dead trees, and some seriously gloomy clouds. There's also a few cornfields surrounding us, which makes me feel right at home. Just behind the player, there's an abandoned truck sitting on a hill, and you may actually recognize this vehicle. In the alternate ending to the Pizza Party minigame, we can see what I believe is the same truck partially buried in the snow. Something you may have not known is that when pressing the button on the side of the level select monitor, this truck's headlights will turn purple. The barn beside us is mostly empty inside, although there is currently a frozen Dreadbear standing here, which I'll explain in a little bit. Far off in the distance, we can see a house sitting on top of a hill, and it appears to have one window that is being illuminated. We can fly over there and check it out, which reveals that its houseness was greatly exaggerated. It is simply a default grid textured model that is completely hollow inside, and with the lighting effects re-enabled, we'll see that it has an orange colored light placed within its walls. This particular asset also uses a forced perspective, as you can see the building is not connected to the map at all, even though it appears to be sitting directly on top of the train from the player view. Now, when loading into this main hub, there's a chance that an easter egg will be loaded in as well. First, there's this large pirate ship that can be seen bobbing back and forth beyond this bloody lake. Upon closer inspection, this is a giant wooden cutout and is completely flat. Something I didn't realize at first is that this ship is supposed to be pulled out of sight by these massive tentacles. They're currently stored beneath the map, and when the player looks in this direction, they'll pop up and drag the ship out of bounds. Once out of view, these assets will be frozen in place, where they will stay until the map is reset. What's odd is that the sinking animation didn't trigger when I saw the ship for the first time, so it sort of just stayed there forever. Huh. Task failed successfully? There's another easter egg that can take place here, only this time on a much smaller scale. When entering the hub, Dreadbear has a chance to spawn beneath the surface of the lake and begin walking up towards the player. He has his arms extended forward, making his walking animation oddly zombie-like. But instead of trying to eat our brain, he will simply walk past us and into the barn. He then freezes when out of sight, and will remain here until the map is reloaded, which is why we saw this model here earlier. Now apparently, a giant Dreadbear can be spawned in where the house usually sits, but I couldn't get the trigger for some reason. There's also a Vanny easter egg that takes place here, but unfortunately, I couldn't activate that one either. That's everything I found in the hub though, so now let's dive into the first of the DLC's minigames, Plushkin Patch. This level functions just like Fun with Plush Baby from the Dark Room minigames. Our objective is to shine our flashlight on the approaching plushkins before they can jump scare us. Our battery is of limited supply, so we'll have to avoid using it for too long, or otherwise risk being caught in the dark. This minigame is surprisingly difficult, as these tiny animatronics can appear in the trees, under a wagon, and even walk directly at us. 
After illuminating this area, we can get a much better look at the assets surrounding the player. This minigame's difficulty makes a lot more sense when you can see how many objects are placed here to obstruct our view. There are dozens of pumpkins, trees, and hay bales placed here. And with limited flashlight battery power, it's hard to check every spot the plushkin can appear. Brightening things up further, we can take a look at this entire map from a distance, where we'll find that it's a small farm sitting atop a hilly terrain. Surrounding the perimeter of this farm are a bunch of trees, though they're not actually 3D objects. They're completely flat and textured a solid gray, and they're simply placed here to stand as a silhouette against the gloomy sky. There's a barn directly behind the player, and it's completely dark inside. Flying inside, we'll find that it's completely empty though, and it's not the last time we'll be seeing this structure. Just beyond the tractor on our left, there is this super creepy well, and I was curious if it led anywhere. Even if we were to get up close, the ground would block your view of the well's interior. Flying beneath the map though, we'll see it does in fact extend out of bounds. It just simply comes to an end, however. Now as the minigame begins, the plushkins will begin spawning in random locations. I wanted to take a closer look at them though. The plushkins are similar to regular plush babies, only they have spooky animatronic masks covering their faces. Upon closer inspection, we can see that they are in fact regular plush babies underneath, and there's a small black barrier covering their eyes. We can also see two red spheres placed inside this barrier, and from the outside, they look like glowing red pupils. Alongside the plushkin who spawn in these stationary locations, there are also these scripted running animations that take place throughout the night. You can see them running by and vanishing once out of sight, but where are they actually going? Well, as you can see, they'll weave through the pumpkins before face planting into the dirt and disappearing. They're not fully unloaded though. If we take a peek beneath this map, we'll see that the plushkin who runs through this play area will be stored out of bounds. They don't always face plant either. As we can see, this foxy plushkin will actually sink straight through the ground. Now, when viewing the plushkin's jump scare, I moved the camera around and found something pretty interesting. Directly in front of the player, there's a wall of one-sided developer text floating in the center of the level. It reads, number two, prize counter white box. And at first, I was a bit puzzled by this. After a bit of digging, I discovered that this text originally appears in the Fun With Plush Baby minigame. The developers most likely overlooked these assets after production and the white boxing phase, and they're simply left behind. What's odd is this same text is used for both Plush Baby levels, and this is likely because the original minigame was used as a base when creating this DLC version. This is not the only bit of developer text found in Help Wanted though, as another can be located in Mangle's Vent Repair minigame. The last two lines read, Mangle, Model Pose, and Ceiling Vent, and Activate Ceiling Button to View Mangle. This leads me to believe that there was supposed to be a vent above the player where Mangle would eventually attack us from, though it appears to have been cut before the final release. Now, after completing this level, we arrive at the DLC's version of the victory screen. Just as I said, you would be seeing this barn again. Rather than a small room surrounded by curtains, the prize room now takes place inside of this rather familiar structure. Only now it's full of posters, balloons, and tons of other Halloween themed decor. Moving the camera back, we can see that this barn actually sits on top of this large flat plane. Beyond this though, there isn't much else to see. Heading into the following minigame, Pirate Ride, we're welcomed by none other than Captain Foxy himself. He explains that we're meant to shoot targets in order to earn points under the threat of being sent to Davy Jones's locker. As we're taken through this pirate adventure, we aim to score as many points as possible by shooting each of the colored targets presented to us. As we reach certain scores, a healthy cutout will appear, and shooting him with our cannon gives us access to hidden areas within the ride. Each of these behind the scenes locations gives us more targets to hit, ultimately unlocking more hidden areas. Depending on how many points we score, we will either win and obtain our prize, or we'll be jump scared by Captain and Foxy. There's a lot to see in this area, so I'll explain the rest as we go. So restarting this level, we can take a good look at it while zoomed out and we'll find that it's actually not super big. The facility where this ride takes place rests on top of a small grassy plain, and aside from this small entrance area, it's mostly barren. Back inside the attraction, we'll see that the cart we ride in is actually the same Freddy Fazbear one seen in this game's intro sequence. Only now it has a cannon mounted to it, as well as these two red lights on the back. With the lights now on, I want to fly through this map and get a good look at some things we can't typically see too well. Majority of this ride is dark, with a few ambient lights placed throughout, and the targets we shoot will be illuminated as we reach them. 
For starters, there is this hallway full of what looks like fireflies or wisps of some kind. And with the lighting effects disabled, we can see that they are simply sal blue spheres with a glow effect applied to them, and they'll just move up and down as we pass by. Now, as I said earlier, there are a handful of secret rooms that can be accessed by shooting the helpy cutouts as we go. Among these hidden areas are the offices where you met with three sets of doors, each containing three targets and a chance to spawn Jack Obani and Jack Ochika. These spooky animatronics will begin their assault the moment the doors are opened, and will jump scare us if we do not close them in time. After success Successfully closing each of the doors, we'll pass through this open hallway before returning to the regular path. When viewed from a different perspective, we can see how these fiery animatronics function out of the player's sight. So as we enter the hallway, and one of the doors is opened, we'll see that the randomly chosen animatronic will simply appear at the end of the room. They walk towards the player, and if the door is closed when they reach it, they will stop and promptly unload. What I found even more interesting is the area just up ahead. Inside this length of hallway is an office with a few desks inside. On the desk in front of the window is a camera controller for the FNAF 3 minigame, just sort of clipping through the surface. I also noticed a lot of Z fighting going on in this area as well, and it's especially noticeable when we look at this clown poster at the start of the hall. Only half of it is visible most of the time, and moving the camera kind of makes it freak out, since the poster and wall are trying to occupy the same space. Another hidden area we can access is the kitchen, and I believe this is supposed to be the kitchen area from FNAF 1. As we move through this section of the map, Jack Ochika can be seen exiting this hallway, and two buttons must be pressed to lure her out of the hallway in front of us. As we approach this location, Chica will be frozen in her walking animation just out of the player's sight. As we move closer though, she'll be activated where she then walks out into the hallway. We can not only get a better look at Chica here, but also this entire room as well. We never stop during this section of the ride, so it's hard to see most of the details put into this area. There is another secret area we can access that takes us through the basement, but before we get there, we must first get swallowed up by the Kraken. Now, I was super curious about this part of the ride, and I wanted to know exactly how it worked. As we go down this hill, we pass through the portal inside the Kraken's mouth, where the screen goes black for a few seconds. We can also see that the entrance to the basement simply splits off from the original track and leads us to a separate area. A transition that is once again hidden by the black screen. The game then decides which track you follow, depending on whether or not the helpy cutout has been hit by the player. We'll be coming back to the basement in just a moment, but for now, I wanted to try and break this level. So I was curious what would happen if we teleported the player away from the cart before the minigame began, and it didn't exactly go as planned. Both the player and the Freddy cart are programmed to move along a set path, and when moving the player away from their intended position, we'll still follow that same predetermined pathing. Only now, we're not on the rails. It's super disorienting flying through the walls and rotating around without any idea where we're going. What's most interesting about this though, is that the cannon actually moved with us. So even though we're not where the game wants us to be, we can still shoot the targets regardless. Unfortunately, I moved a bit too far away from the cart and couldn't properly aim at the targets. So I decided to tackle this minigame riding side saddle instead. Upon reaching the basement, I want to shoot these red targets to keep Bonnie and Chica at bay. And I found it was a lot easier to shoot the red targets if I moved the player directly in front of the cart. For some reason, when playing through this area without hacks, I was unable to hit the buttons due to the elevator's collider blocking my shots. So this change of positioning definitely helped that fact. And as the elevator went up, I was able to catch a glimpse of this area's assets unloading. Finally, I realized how claustrophobic this building is, so I decided to open things up a bit by destroying the entire roof. Now we can see the ride in its entirety in a single shot, including each of this level's hidden rooms. That's it for Captain Foxy's Pirate Adventure, but before we go, we can have a quick look at Captain Foxy's jump scare. It's pretty much unchanged from Foxy's original jump scare, only now he's wearing the rest of the getup. That's got to be the spookiest pirate I've ever seen. Heading into the third and final Afraid of the Dark minigame, we arrive at the Corn Maze, a massive labyrinth guarded by the world's angriest guard dog. As some of you may know, we've actually covered this level on Horoscope once before. We've learned plenty of new methods for breaking games since then, however, so we're going to put it under the scope once again. So to quickly recap this area, we start in the center of this huge maze with the simple objective of locating the exit and escaping. It's never that easy in a horror game though, so of course a key is required before that's possible. Within this map there are several colored gates, as well as the corresponding keys placed randomly throughout, and want to locate the gate that matches our key if we wish to complete the night. Patrolling this area is a nightmarish animatronic Grim Foxy, who it feels like we can never truly evade. If spotted he will aggressively give chase, resulting in a jump scare if he manages to catch you. It's a pretty simple level, but it's among the harder mini games in this DLC. There are dozens of turns and dead ends, making it all the more difficult to evade our fiery foe. 
On the outskirts of this map, we'll see that each gate has a road that leads off into the distance, where they will eventually come to an end. We'll be exploring this area further in just a bit, but first, let's take a look at Grim Foxy. So the moment we load into this map, Foxy will be placed within the maze, where they'll endlessly walk towards you. They're definitely not playing fair though, since we're never able to fully evade them. The reason for this is because Foxy can teleport depending on the player's current position, meaning no matter how far away we walk, they will always be able to catch up. This trick is used so that the player cannot create a gap large enough that Foxy is no longer a threat, and because of this, will never be more than a short distance from Foxy's position. A similar method is used in the game Escape the Backrooms, where the entity, Bacteria, is frequently warped just at the player's sight until we are spotted, making it rare to complete the level without ever encountering them. Even in my own game, Zardi's Maze, we use a similar mechanic for Zardi, otherwise there'd be a chance the player would never even see him. Lots of horror games do this if maps are expansive. While playing through this level, there are also scripted scares where Foxy can be seen running through our line of sight. Only, it's not the same enemy we typically see in this maze. We can actually find the model used for these encounters stored beneath the floor of this map, and it's just frozen in place. Once triggered, this model will be warped just at the player's sight, where it then runs into view. When this animation is complete, we can see that they sink straight into the floor and freeze in place. Right beside this model though, is something else that's rather interesting. In the center of this level, there's a locked cellar door that we're currently unable to access. This door can only be unlocked when the player manages to collect each of the keys hidden within this level. And when this is done, the doors will be opened. Heading inside, we'll find this small basement area with a vanny mask placed on the table in front of us. And by putting it on, we will finish the level. You can see that beneath this map, the staircase extends into the void a short ways before it comes to a stop. When the final key is collected, the basement will be loaded in just below the rest of the map. It's a small section of floor with a shoddy structure built on top, and the player is warped here the moment we hit the trigger on the stairs up above. What would happen if we tried to access this early though? Well, by destroying the cellar doors, we can actually access the stairs before any of the keys have been collected. But unfortunately, we simply slide down the stairs and get stuck on the black barrier. Our screen is also flashing with static, and there's a pretty interesting reason for that. As I'm sure you've noticed, this level is one of the few free roam levels in Help Wanted. And due to this, certain fail safes remain necessary. In this case, whenever the player steps out of the main gameplay area, their screen will be completely covered in static. This is done so that if the player somehow manages to break out of the map or lean forward through a wall in VR, they will not be able to see anything. The barrier not only surrounds this entire map, but is also present in certain inaccessible areas within the maze. This static is not just an effect applied to our camera either, as we can actually find it stored quite a ways beneath the center of this level. Each time we step out of bounds, this small panel will be moved directly in front of the player camera, completely blocking our vision. Because this is an actual object within the map, we can circumvent this failsafe by deleting the static itself. Now we can remove the gate and freely walk around out of bounds without being blinded. Since we're no longer in the maze and outside of Foxy's navigational mesh, Foxy has no idea how he's supposed to reach us, so he just resets infinitely to his idle location. Believe it or not, we don't need hacks to accomplish this either, because our greatest defense against Foxy actually exists within the walls of this labyrinth. Throughout the level, there are several dead zones where Foxy's AI cannot properly route to the player, resulting in the same effect as leaving the map completely. By stepping into these specific places, or just straight up touching certain walls, Foxy will get confused and teleport back to the same corner, where they will get stuck in this endless loop. This can even be achieved when Foxy is standing right in front of us, and as long as we haven't been spotted, they will be warped away. And with that, that's everything I found hidden behind the scenes in the Curse of Dread Bears Afraid of the Dark minigames. There's a lot more to see in this creepy Halloween themed DLC, so make sure you subscribe today and leave a like to help out the channel. Thanks for watching, and cheers!